And when you're looking at flooring, there are quite a few options. One of those is laminate flooring. Now, laminate flooring is a cost-effective and easy way to get a wooden floor effect in your home. But there are some very important details to look at before you decide to go ahead. First, and in my opinion, most importantly, is where you're going to use the laminate. It's very important to remember that laminate flooring is made from compressed wood board, or MDF, with a decorative laminate layer over the top. That means that it's sensitive to moisture. So using it in high moisture areas like the bathroom or kitchen is not a good idea. But that doesn't mean that you can't get a beautiful finish in the rest of your home that can last up to around 20 odd years. Laminate flooring comes in a few different grades. These grades are measured in AC or abrasion class and rated from one through to five. One being for low traffic areas and five for very high traffic areas. The higher the number, the thicker and tougher the decorative laminate over the top of the board and the less likely it is to scratch or gouge. Another variable is the thickness of the board. They vary from around 6.3 to 8.3 and even 12.3 millimeters thick. But don't assume just because the board is thicker that it's more durable. The thickness of the board can also be selected for a few other reasons. To match up to existing flooring or tiles, to raise the level if a thick carpet or tile was removed, and even to hide uneven floors. A thinner laminate may sag and show uneven floors, where a thicker board will stay rigid and hide small dips. So now you've decided to go with laminate flooring, and you've chosen the right AC rating and thickness for your home. If you haven't, remember that you can use the builder's services to figure it all out for you. Now what you'll need. Now when laying laminate flooring, a very important step is laying an underlining. This helps to level the floor, add some cushioning and stops the boards tapping on the floor when you walk on them. But the most important reason for the underliner is to stop moisture from the floor or the concrete underneath damaging the wooden boards. Insulation is very easy. The laminate boards use a tongue and groove system that requires no glue or nails to install. All you have to do is click them together. To cut boards to fit corners or frames, you can use a mitre saw or a jigsaw with a very fine tooth. And when installing, it's very important to remember that the laminate floors are free floating floors. This is because the boards expand and move, especially when you walk on them. So always leave an eight mm expansion gap between the edge of the board and your wall. This will prevent warping and delaminating. Then to finish around the walls and hide those expansion joints, you can use matching skirtings, Along built-in cupboards, you can use scotias. You can round off edges with reducers. Join rooms or match up to tiles with T-moldings. And butt up to door frames with end caps. This is possibly one of the easiest and quickest flooring options to install. Alternatively, you can use a builder's service to find an installer near you. Just remember that laminate floors don't like moisture, so use the proper laminate floor cleaner with a slightly damp microfiber mop and be sure to wipe up any spills as soon as possible. Now for a wide range of laminate flooring options, finishes and colors, visit Builders in store or shop online at builders.co.za. And for more videos like this, check out the blog on the website. Get to Builders, get it done.